Hi everybody, my name is Vanessa and I'd like to welcome you to my channel. Today we're going to be talking about how to modify the color of drop cloth. Now, I'm guessing you're here because you know a little bit about how amazing of a fabric drop cloth is. But if you don't know this, drop cloth is like the best kept secret of DIYers, right? It is a nice, thick fabric that you can find for relatively cheap. You should be able to find it at your local hardware store, but if you can't find it at your hardware store, you can order it off the internet or something. Now, I have been using drop cloth in my home for years now. In fact, five years ago, I had a brown couch that I didn't love. And so I just made a slip cover for it using drop cloth that I had used one of these methods that I'm about to tell you about to lighten. And it's the couch that I'm currently sitting on. Recently, I noticed that this couch that I made the slip cover for was showing a lot more wear and tear than I wanted it to show. I'm one of those people who wash my slip covers once a month, whereas others probably just wash them twice a year. But I've always said part of the reason why I used, um, a slip cover so that I have the freedom to wash it as often as I want. And given how cheap the slip cover was to make, I figured if something were to happen and it showed a lot more wear than I wanted it to show, I could just redo the slip cover. Now, thankfully, I don't have to redo the whole thing. However, I do need to redo some of these seat covers because they are showing a lot of <laughs> wear. In fact, there are some holes in them. This one here is not even the original cover anymore. In fact, it's just a piece of cloth <laughs> that um, a drop cloth like cloth that I had that I just bleached and I just folded it over this cushion here. So needless to say, these cushions desperately need new covers. And I'll make another video about this. This is not about the covers. This is specifically how I change the color of the drop cloth. So because of this couch and it, the repairs that it needs, I had some drop cloth that I needed to bleach. However, I picked up two chairs. Well, one I already had, but I picked up another one to sort of match it to go in here. And I wanted those to be a darker color. I wanted it to be more of a charcoal gray to echo the charcoal gray that I have in the chairs in my dining room. And Ideally, I would have just wanted to buy the exact same fabric that's on the chairs in the dining room, but that's discontinued. It's no longer being made, or at least I can't find it anywhere. And so I had to get creative and I decided, well, if I couldn't find the exact fabric I wanted, I might as well dye some drop cloth. Now I had never done this before. This was my first time, but you know what? It was a raging success. The original color of drop cloth is quite lovely. It's kind of like an oatmeal color. I mean, it varies slightly. Sometimes it's a little more um, gray on the oatmeal scale and sometimes it's a little more cream on the oatmeal scale, but it's about an oatmeal color. It's a very lovely color. I've used it as is in multiple places in my house. In fact, even in the chair that you're seeing in the footage, that is just the raw drop cloth in its a lovely state. And so there is a time and place to just use drop cloth as is. There's also a time and place to either lighten it or darken it. And that's what I want to talk to you guys about today. One thing I should tell you is that in my experience, both of these processes only work if your drop cloth is made of 100% cotton. I have in fact tried both of these processes with cotton, with drop cloth that was not 100% cotton and it did not work. So I misspoke earlier. I said that I had never dyed drop cloth before. And that's not true. I had attempted to dye drop cloth one time before and it did not take at all. And I think it's because the fabric was not 100% cotton. So you have to make sure that you find 100% cotton drop cloth. Otherwise it won't bleach at all really, or it might bleach just a little bit or it won't dye at all now. And so please make sure it is 100% cotton. If sometimes in your hardware store, it will not say it's 100% cotton. So if it doesn't say it's 100% cotton, don't buy it and just go order on the internet. You might spend literally two or $3 more, but it's worth it to make sure that it is 100% cotton because otherwise this won't work. <laughs> it has to be 100% cotton for it to work. To lighten the drop cloth, 
all you have to do is bleach it. It's not a hard process at all. It's just a little bit of a time consuming and stinky process. And so if you have a top loading washer, you can just do the whole process in there. And that would be that you just load it with water, put a ton of bleach in there, and then let your drop cloth just soak in there. And when it's done soaking for like 24 hours in the hottest water, you would run the wash. I don't have a top loading washer. Mine is very much a front loader. So I, I have to do this outside. So I had to do this in a bin. Now I learned from the past that it's best to do this outside because like I say, it gets extremely stinky and it's not good for you to be inhaling all of that bleach smell. And so what I did is I got uh, an old bin the sort of storage bins that you can buy to just store things, say in your attic. I have some that I keep in my shed that I use, that I have multiple uses for. So I just cleaned it out and I filled it up with the hottest water that I can get my hands on. And I just got water from my faucet because my faucet is directly in front of a window. And so I was able to get the hose from my faucet out of the window to fill the bin. And then what I did is I used about a half of a gallon of bleach in that bin. And now you will have to judge how much water you have and how much bleach to add, but the more bleach, the better. Now, that doesn't mean you should add two gallons of bleach to your water, right? You should not be bleaching that much drop cloth. I, I don't know this for a fact because I did not measure. It's not something you really truly need to measure. But if you're the sort of person who needs some sort of guidelines, I would say it probably was something like for every five gallon of water, I did about a half a gallon of bleach, something like that, okay? And so I just stirred that really nicely and then I put my drop cloth in there and you could kind of see the color changing. If not changing, you could see the color of the water start to become more and more yellow right, be, right in front of your eyes within just a few minutes of you putting the drop cloth in there. And then as a bonus, I took the lid of my bin and I put it on top of it and I just left it outside in the 90 something degree weather in a 90 something degree heat for like 24 hours. <laughs> I just forgot about it and I just let it sit there because the warmer you could keep the water, the better the process will work. And which is another reason why a lot of people do this in their washing machine because the washing machine can put hot water in there and just sort of like keep the water insulated a little bit. So I did this process twice. So after it was done sitting there for the first 24 hours, I got it out of the bleach solution and I washed it in my washing machine. And then I repeated the process for another 24 hours. And then it came out relatively white. I bleach my drop cloth twice. And even as I'm looking at the footage, I'm realizing that it's not as white as my slip cover is. It's a, it's a, a little bit yellower than I want it to be. So I'm actually going to bleach it one more time just to make it a little whiter still. You can do this process as many times as you want to to make sure that you yield the result that you want. I will say this though, if you bleach your drop cloth once and you are sure that you use quite a bit of bleach and you don't see any change in the fabric, as are you did not get a 100% cotton fabric because after the first bleaching, the, the difference should be pretty drastic. <laughs> if you didn't notice any difference at all, it's probably because your fabric is not 100% cotton, which is why it's important that you get 100% cotton. Now, as for the dyeing of the fabric, it was most certainly the easiest thing. Now, I just went online and I ordered some dye that was called charcoal gray because that's about the color I was going for. I ordered three bottles because I figured more than one bottle was what was necessary. I've done enough DIY projects to have a good sense these days of like how to estimate things. And so three bottles was a really good estimation. You may have to do some math to decide how much dye you need. Now, I did a similar process to with the 
dyeing of the drop cloth. So what I did with that one is I also filled my bin, the same bin, <laughs> with the hottest water from the tap as I could get because in order to dye fabric, you need like really hot fabric. I don't, I don't want to say the hotter, the better, but you want it to be around 120 degrees, the bottle said, or as close to that as you can possibly get it. So the hottest water from the tap is the best I could do, especially since I was doing this outside, which is probably a good place for you to do it so that you don't stain anything in your home. And then you are just supposed to add some salt and a little bit of dish soap to the water and you die. That's it. I don't know. I don't, I can't tell you why you have to do that, but the instructions are clear that you're supposed to do salt and a little bit of dish soap for about every bottle of dye I used. I used about a cup of salt and just a few drops of dish soap. So maybe like three teaspoons of dish soap went into it. And then you put your fabric in there and kind of just like stir it. I used a yardstick to just kind of like poke at it and keep the water moving for about 30 minutes to an hour. And then that's it. <laughs> your fabric is dyed and you can wash it. Um, you are supposed to remove the water and then run after the dyeing process is done before you wash it. What you're supposed to do is keep rinsing it until the water runs clear. Now, I probably rinsed mine like 15 times and the water refused to run clear, probably because it was such a dark fabric. So I quit. I gave up after like 15 times and just washed it. It was close enough. I just washed it. And that's it, you guys. That's how I both bleach drop cloth and dye drop cloth within like days of each other. Now, I haven't used the fabric just yet, but I will be using it in multiple ways in my home. And so I encourage you to do this if you're looking for thick, good quality canvas-like fabric for not as much money as you would spend in the fabric store it's such a steal to do it this way that even with the dyeing even with the price for the dye and the salt or even for with the price of the bleach it's still entirely worth it and so i encourage you to do that and play around with it a little bit and so thank you guys for watching i really appreciate you being here i'll see you in the next video